Hey fam, I want you to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin, and don't forget to turn on your notifications. Folks, the political career of Catherine Pugh is over. The mayor of Baltimore, former state senator, former state rep, resigned today in disgrace after Baltimore Sun published reports that show that she took nearly $500,000 from various companies for children's books she wrote, but the problem is those children's books, for the most part, were never published. Uh, today at 3.30 p.m., her attorney read a letter of resignation uh, from, uh, the, uh, from another Baltimore City official who wrote it and delivered to him yesterday saying that she needed to quit. This is after, of course, uh, the Baltimore City Council voted for her to resign. She made clear she was never going to resign. She was going to resume her office when she returned from being gone for illness. She says she's been suffering from pneumonia, has been away for about a month, but it all came and it came to an end today. Thank you very much for coming. This is a sad day for Mayor Pugh and a sad day for the city of Baltimore. I have a brief statement from the mayor and I will be taking no questions. The following is Mayor Pugh's statement. Dear citizens of Baltimore, I would like to thank you for allowing me to serve as the 50th mayor. It has been an honor and a privilege. Today, I am submitting my written resignation to the Baltimore City Council. I am sorry for the harm that I have caused to the image of the city of Baltimore and the credibility of the office of the mayor. Baltimore deserves a mayor who can move our great city forward. I want to thank all of our department heads and staff who work hard every day to improve the quality of life for all who live, work, and visit our city. I also thank Jack Young, the president of the city council, for his steadfast leadership in my absence. I wish you well in your new role as mayor of Baltimore City. Sincerely, Catherine E. Pugh. Ms. Tixay from my office will provide you all with a copy of the mayor's letter of resignation effective immediately. Again, it was $500,000 she took from the University of Maryland Medical Center where she was a director overseeing business for that medical center. She has been under, also took $100,000 from Kaiser Permanente. Uh, the problem is that many of those books were never even published. Uh, it's been a very rocky tenure for Catherine Pugh, dealing with, of course, crime in the city, as well as the drama over a police chief. Uh, one particular, first of all, police chief resigned. Another person who she picked uh, had uh, issues. He had to step aside before they finally hired someone. She was a former majority leader in the Maryland Senate from 2015 to 2016, a state senator, a state delegate. She also, of course, served on the Baltimore City Council. Uh, and uh, in addition to that, uh, has a long history in media uh, and and uh, previously uh, worked, as, worked as an independent editor uh, on supplements for the Baltimore Sun. Again, uh, and now this is interesting. When she won the race, when she won uh, the mayoral race, she beat back, uh, of course, uh, another, the first black female mayor uh, of Baltimore who herself, who she had to resign when she used gift cards that were given to the city that were meant for the city's poor. Talk about uh, issues there in Baltimore. Joining us right now, our panel, let's go right to them. Joseph Williams, senior editor, U.S. News and World Report. We have, of course, Greg Carr, chair, Department of Afro-American Studies, Howard University, and also Erica Savage-Wilson, host of Savage Politics Podcast. Um, this is obviously... Uh, a swift downfall, Erica, for uh, Catherine Pugh. Uh, you had the previous mayor uh, who was highly criticized because of the Freddie Gray uh, decision. Also, what happened there, she chose not to run for re-election. Uh, Pugh beat a host of candidates. Uh, many folks said that she had the political experience to actually uh, lead Baltimore. Now, uh, as a result of this decision, uh, talk about uh, a swift downfall and talk about someone who uh, still has lots of answers that the FBI raided her office and her home and her lawyer's office and City Hall mm -hmm. as a result of uh, what some call the, these dealings under the table. Exactly. And to include the IRS, 
to let us know that this is something that even though she resigned today, that it's not going to be over by a long shot. Um, right now, the city is really looking to move forward with the new leadership, with Mayor Young being in place. And I, I think what um, is most harmful in all of this is that um, Mayor Pugh having won during a time where um, our current president was uh, sworn into office um, was really kind of like a symbol of hope. And so um, with these um, allegations that have now proven to be true, that are now charges, is really um, going to cause a lot more harm to some of the charities that were affiliated with um, that Healthy Holly's book, such as the a charity that I think was up for renewal of a grant. And that grant is now being held up because of their now um, dealings with Mayor Hughes. So, I mean, uh, it was a promise that definitely has unraveled. But I think most importantly is some of the nonprofit entities, um, people's careers have definitely been harmed um, over her poor decision making. Uh, Greg, it was Sheila Dixon, who was the previous, uh, who was the first black mayor, female mayor of Baltimore, who had to resign with the use of those cards as well, who, who Pew beat. Uh, in uh, the election to become mayor, and uh, it just talks, it just shows again uh, how things can unravel quickly. But we talk about some six hundred thousand dollars received, and then she stands up there and gives a news conference and says that forty thousand copies of those books. There's no evidence they were even printed. Okay, it was her company, uh, and then she all of a sudden at this news conference pulls out a line of baby clothes. And folks are going, what the hell are you doing? Mm. Uh, and some believe that she's actually not ill, that this is really a cover because of all the drama she's been under. And so talk, it's just craziness there, again, in Baltimore. Yes, I mean, you know, strangely enough, though, I'm, I'm somewhat encouraged because there's a rule of law. $600,000 is no money when the report came out yesterday night that uh, foreign governments are renting out space in Trump Tower. Um, there's no emoluments clause apparently in the United States Constitution, but uh, as you covered on the show, man, um, we just left one of the highs in the history of Maryland politics and in this country. You got a black woman running the state house in Maryland who came as a consensus candidate after they couldn't get together. So Catherine Pugh uh, getting caught up in a scandal, and I agree, says Savage. This is this is much deeper than some children's books. I mean, they they're going full scale. There is a rule of law. Who cares what Her uh, Larry Hogan thinks? At the end of the day. Baltimore's a black city, and they seem to course correct. Listening to the new mayor, Young, talk about what he's trying to do is encouraging to me. It's sad, but if this were 40 years ago, when black mayors were under serial attack, we might have a different perspective. But I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged by the fact that there seems to be some rule of law in Maryland, unlike, apparently, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Joseph, the fact that she was over uh, this University of Maryland Medical, first of all, one of the directors, is taking money as a result of that, so you're making decisions and you're taking money from folks who bought your children's book. I, I, who the hell knew she was even the children's author? Uh, the, and even to that, that amount, and other people actually were giving as well. And so the numbers could be anywhere from 700,000 to a million. We're still waiting to you know, figure out what, you know, what is that final number. People say, look, this is, this is why you have ethics boards, why you have reports, and why you cannot be doing deals with people who are doing business with entities that you oversee as a politician. Well, see, that's part of the problem, right? I mean, Baltimore, I have deep ties to the city. My, my, my relatives all live there. I got cousins, aunts, uncles, all live in Baltimore. I've grown up there practically half my life. And the city always seems to be snake bit at, at, at this sort of thing, where we've had a succession of mayors, Sheila Dixon, now uh, Catherine Pugh, who had to resign under a cloud of scandal. So it's a bad look anytime this happens. It's even a worse look with a city that has chronically struggled with a homicide problem, with a poverty problem, and you have a mayor who arrived with such promise. I mean, as, as, as Erica was saying, a lot of things that are going to be hurt are charities uh, and people that, that she had purported to help. So it's really unfortunate because if you, look, if you unwind the deal a little bit further, hmm. you're talking about campaign contributions that were funneled through H Healthy Holly. She self-funded her camp, part of her campaign through Healthy Holly. I mean, she had to know that this was going to, this was going to show up at some point. And it's never a great look when the FBI comes out of your house with boxes and boxes of evidence. I mean, it's, it's, it's unrecoverable at this point, and she'd be fortunate to stay out of jail. Mm. Uh, but it also speaks to but, you know, an issue that she still has, of course, a U.S. state investigation. And yes, when the FBI is involved, uh, now you talk about the IRS as well. Uh, and so, yes, she's going to be certainly fighting for uh, to keep her pension 
and to stay out of jail. And so we'll certainly see uh, what happens with Fort that. Fort Unfiltered, be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roland Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. <laughs>